Berlin on ESMG Berlin EMBA experience. My name is Mila and I am the moderator of this webinar on behalf of Unimine. Please welcome our panelists, Lawrence Wilson, Marketing Manager at ESMG Berlin, and one of their successful alumni, Marion Schultz. They will be telling us about the educational journey and how acquiring a degree from ESMT Berlin can enhance your career. You will be able to send your questions throughout the entire webinar by typing them in the Q&A box, and our panelists will take the time to give you an answer during the Q&A session in the second half of this event. Okay, let's check the sound now. Could you please write in the chat box if you can hear me? Okay, great. We are ready and we can start with the presentation now. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Mina. Um, so, uh, my name is Lawrence. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm the marketing manager at ESMT Berlin. Um, today, I'm just going to very quickly run you through some of the sort of facets of ESMT Berlin before we get to uh, the good bits, the, the bit we're all here for, which is the, the Q&A with, uh, with Marin. Um, so here you can see the contents, uh, the breakdown. So uh, I'll talk about the program, the career services on offer, and the application process. Uh, but first, uh, I guess it's um, the big question is, uh, is who are ESMT Berlin? Um, you can see on the right-hand side here, this is our uh, fancy campus facade uh, around the front door. And if you look on the left-hand side, just underneath the big, tall, pointy thing, that's where our campus is. So very, very central in Berlin. Um, uh, it's, a, it's in a good spot. Uh, and the reason that we're here, uh, and not just uh, um, uh, where we are in Berlin, but also why we're in Berlin at all, is because back in 2002, uh, these 25 multinational corporations got together to form their own business school. Uh, they Essentially, they thought the students they were getting from other schools didn't necessarily have the skills that they were looking for. So they thought, right, let's just cut out the middleman. We can do it ourselves. And this is you know, how the school was born. And, they chose Berlin not just because it was the center of a lot of kind of political and economic power in Europe, but also because it was a city undergoing a lot of development and a lot of growth. And, uh, and this was our mission. So to develop entrepreneurial leaders who think globally and act responsibly. Now, hopefully these three kind of themes you'll see crop up uh, throughout this presentation and throughout the discussion, uh, entrepreneurial, global and responsible. Um, now, we always say you probably shouldn't pay too much attention to business school rankings, and it shouldn't be the main reason that you choose one school over another, uh, but it's good to know kind of roughly where schools fit in the, in the overall milieu. Um, and we're very proud, I think, of, uh, and rightly so, of a recent Financial Times ranking that puts us at number one in Europe, and uh, number one in Germany, sorry, and number nine in Europe. Uh, we're also one of 90 schools in the world to have uh, triple accreditation of uh, these kind of three main accreditation bodies, uh, AACSB, AMBER, and Equus. Uh, what that means is that wherever you end up in the world after graduation, your degree will be uh, recognized. And this fourth one down here, that's the, the German accreditation body. Uh, now, the, the Executive MBA, um, which is the program we're here to learn about today, uh, this is our most senior program. It's designed for people who are taking that final step in their career into very, very senior leadership positions. So executive leadership and, and C-level. Uh, it's an 18 month program, begins in October every year. Uh, and it's a modular sort of uh, teaching uh, method. So the majority will happen in online, uh, but we also have 10 in-person modules spaced out around the 18 months. The last four are about six days for each module. Uh, seven of those are in Berlin and, and three of them are international. Um, as you can see here, uh, GNAM, uh, the IFS, those kind of things. Um, uh, so I, and that's uh, definitely something that we should uh, ask Marin about later because uh, those international modules, uh, I think, are great fun and, and a very uh, effective kind of learning opportunity as well. Um, now, the, the class kind of breakdown, um, I mentioned it was international, and, and that's reflected in the, uh, the type of students that we have in class. So you can see 63% international, 26 different nationalities represented in a class of 54. Um, and this is something that we really actively aspire to when we recruit students. Um, obviously, for a, a modular program that involves kind of flying into Berlin, you do get a slightly more German flavor than our, for example, our one year MBA, which requires relocating full time. Um, but we still maintain this very, very international group of people. Uh, and the other thing to note is the, the class size. So it's, um, it's quite small, especially compared to you know, some MBAs that are out there. Uh, but that's deliberately so. So we try and keep the class uh, as small and as intimate as possible. We really wouldn't go past maybe 60 students. 
Uh, and the reason for that is that we're trying to create a very uh, close-knit and collaborative learning environment where uh, it's not so much the breadth of your network, but the depth of the connections that you make, which is the most important thing, uh, especially with such a senior position, a senior um, uh, uh, course like the Executive MBA, you're going to be learning almost as much from your classmates as you are from the, uh, uh, from the faculty. Um, now, um, obviously, for those coming to business school, um, there's more to it than just uh, than just what you learn. I mean, fundamentally, everybody, the reason everyone goes to business school is to improve their career, is to secure a better job after graduation. Uh, now, this is perhaps less uh, important for the executive MBA because the expectation for many students is that they will stay with their current employer after graduation. Um, but uh, regardless of whether you're thinking of changing uh, your employer or sticking with it, you will have access to the career services available at ESMT. Uh, now they work in sort of two sort of distinct ways. Uh, one is to improve your profile. So through things like cover letter workshops, interview workshops, strength finders, those kind of things. And the other is through networking. So bringing you to companies through uh, company visits and bringing companies to you. So through career fair on, on campus. And you can see a variety of different um, kind of examples of some of the companies that we uh, commonly work with down there. I mean, it's, it tends to be quite a mix between uh, large multinationals, mid-sized German corporations, and uh, smaller Berlin-based startups. And we are relatively fortunate in that respect that uh, Berlin sits on top of what is really the, the kind of largest startup economy in Europe, really. Now, the uh, application process. And this is, I guess, the, the million dollar question. Um, how do you actually kind of get here? Um, it's relatively straightforward. Um, once you submit your application, which contains uh, no more than the kind of regular application would, a few references, a few essays, you'll be invited to a personal interview, whether that's uh, in person or online. Uh, once that interview has been completed, the admissions committee will review your application and turn around a decision for you within about a week. So this whole process here from submission to decision should take no more than two or three weeks maximum. Uh, we do have scholarships available for all of our all of our programs. Um, it's a relatively simple scholarship process. You just need to indicate to us when you apply that you are interested in applying for a scholarship. And uh, we will put together a personal scholarship package for you, which will then be presented to you once you're accepted onto the program. Um, now, I know that uh, uh, admissions tests are a big thing for uh, many, many business schools. Um, and I know there's a lot of disruption that's happened with that at the moment. I mean, it's pretty much impossible to get an in-person GMAT or GRE appointment at the moment. Uh, and so we have uh, extended our policies to hopefully be as, um, as flexible as possible when it comes to those kind of things. Uh, the GMAT and the GRE are both offering at-home options as well. Um, so for people who are interested in applying for multiple schools, then there are opportunities out there. Um, but for those who are interested in applying just with ESMT, we have our own um, ESMT admissions test. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, one of those things that's been designed so that you shouldn't have to work too much beforehand. It's more of a kind of honest assessment of where you're at. Uh, it takes about two hours and it can be done online or in person on campus. Uh, it's also free, so it's covered by us, the school. So um, if you are interested in applying with ESMT, that's probably the way that we would recommend uh, applying, um, especially because with the e uh, EMBA, when we were dealing with senior executives, it's kind of a bit redundant to make people who've had a 15 or 20 year career go back and you know spend months studying mathematics that they haven't used since high school. So um, this is a slightly more kind of relaxed test. But one thing I should say is that obviously if you're considering applying for other programs aside from ours, um, other schools will not accept our test. Um, once you're accepted, we will kind of hand you over to our student services team and they will help with your kind of onboarding. Um, so introducing you to your fellow classmates uh, and helping with kind of any relocation matters for that first kind of in-person module. Um, OK, so that's enough uh, from me. Um, I'm very happy now to um, introduce uh, Marion. So if anyone has any questions uh, that have come through to Mia, then feel free to uh, type them into the questions box. Uh, but I guess I'll kick off, uh, Marin. Um, do you want to maybe introduce yourself and um, your kind of uh, your story about ESMT? Yes, hello everyone. My name's Marin. Um, 
I started uh, the EMBA in, April, uh, in October 2017 and graduated in October 2000 and uh, no, in April 2019, confused. So uh, 18 months later, so last year, um, I graduated and um, I'm originally from the UK, but I, but I live in Berlin, so that made it um, a little bit more easier. Um, but I decided to go for the uh, ESMT and do an EMBA because I did a previous course there and I was absolutely fascinated by the quality of the faculty and the facility of the, of the school itself and it just made me hungry for more so um, it was always one of my goals to do to do an MBA um, and the actual program um, fit, just fitted in well with my job and with my family. Um, it was a challenge but at the end of the day um, I was very happy to to then uh, do the EMBA at the ESMT as well and it was it was the only school I applied for at the time because it was the only school I wanted to really go to. So. That's fantastic. Um, uh, Mila, if you've uh, been given any questions, then please feel free to uh, jump in. But I guess for now, um, Marion, would you be able to kind of talk us through what constitutes a, a typical week for you whilst you're studying? Because uh, I know there's probably a big disconnect between like the in-person modules and the and the working online. Yeah. Um, it took a time. It took some time for me to work out what the uh, ideal um, schedule for myself was. Um, so I know the the the, the program has changed slightly. At the time when I did the program, we had uh, quite a few um, one week models, and then we had uh, a two week module as well, which was quite challenging. Um, a normal a normal month uh, would look like. Um, so heading up to a module, you had quite a lot of pre-readings, um, so cases, um, books, and so on that had to be read in, in order to be prepared for the course and for the module you were running up to. Um, then you had the, uh, the, the on-site module itself. Um, the, the schedule when you're on campus does allow for a certain amount of work. Um, but I envied my classmates who had the complete week um, just to focus on, on campus work because you do need the time. You, you work in groups, you work in uh, individual assignments, and you even need the time in the breaks to, um, to just discuss things and just to network and just to have some time to free your brain. It does allow for calls though, so you can do some work and check emails in the breaks. It, it's very, the, 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 the design of the schedule is, you, you can just see that the experience of ESMT is there. It does allow for quite a lot, but still um, it's a very intense time on, on campus because the days are long. Um, there's a lot of, uh, of content that has to go into the week that you're on campus and um, it's, it, it, it flies, it just goes past very, very quickly. And then after you've been on campus, you normally have um, work to do after uh, that module. That could be uh, individual assignments, online exams, Group work, you 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 get you get put into study groups um, where you also have to complete group work, and then after a, like roughly two weeks, um, all that work is done, and then you start preparing for the next module. So after two modules, you get into this kind of uh, rhythm that you then know, um, okay, when to start with your pre work. Then you're on site, you do have to do some post work and then you start working on the next module. And the modules are designed into topics so that the, 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 the courses do relate to some degree as well. Okay, cool. And um, the split between kind of group work and individual work, was it sort of 50-50 or was it weighted one way or the other? Um, Yes, well, um, I would say 50-50, but the group work was normally quite, it was a bit more complex. So um, 
I, I remember more of the group work looking back than working by myself because of course in the group work um, you had to organize yourself differently when you're in a group of people spread out over five time zones um, coming in from different places you have to just organize Skype meetings when you actually find a or whatever meetings if you if, when you found a time slot to organize such a meeting they do take up to two hours um, and then you go and normally go into to individual work after that so I can remember the group work because it was it was just a different kind of challenge but it was also a lot of fun um, but I would say it, it still was about 50 50 I can still rem quite quite uh, well remember the individual exams that we had to take as well and the, and the reading so the pre-reading is is quite a lot the reading the cases being preparing for a module but when it goes to when it comes to the post work I can remember the group the group side um, a little bit more that's fantastic and you mentioned the kind of assessment so was it always exam based or was it a bit of a mix um, a bit of a mix so with the group group work was normally an assignment where we had to then submit some kind of um, final final document after each course and the individual um, part was exam based um, some uh, courses also have a certain percentage of class participation and some courses have uh, on-campus quizzes so okay. Based on the course, it's uh, a combination of uh, class participation, uh, on-campus quizzes, and um, post-module exams and group work. Fantastic. It sounds like quite a variety, really. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I suppose the, the point of what you learn, really, is uh, to then be able to, to use it in your day-to-day -day lives, and, and especially for a program like this, where you're designed to be working at the same time um, did you find that it was easy to implement what you learned when you went back to the work after the, the sessions um, what what I liked the most with the with the um, EMBA was it gave me a very broad perspective of, of business so um, it really touched every single um, every single aspect even things that I do not, I, I'm, I'm the managing director of the company where I work, so I should have quite a, um, quite a, a, a broad knowledge anyway, but there were even things that I was not really used to dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, and I had the opportunity to, um, to really broaden my, my, my tool set. Um, and for the things that I was really interested in, I had the opportunity to dig down deeper. And the ones that I was not really that interested in, I still had this um, enough knowledge to handle certain situations. Um, what I also liked being in the EMBA was I could relate to quite a lot of it. So it, nothing was completely new. You were reading cases and it was like, oh, that's quite familiar. I think I've been in a similar situation or I could imagine being in a similar situation. So it was really not completely just like things from a textbook. It was really things that you could relate to on a on a business day to day basis as well. Um, I'd, I'd like to implement more when you when you're when you've graduated and, you, and you're out and it's like, yes, I'm going to change the world. Um, of course, you can't implement everything that you learn, but you you look at things differently. So um, after after graduating or even after certain modules and courses, things happen and you're not like, oh, where's that come from? You're not com completely shocked. It, it's like um, taking a different perspective of things and just looking at them differently. And it's like, OK, um, this sounds a little bit familiar. So a lot of it. Even if you can't implement everything, um, it's just being able to deal with things um, with less surprise and taking a different perspective of um, looking at things and not being afraid. What, what, what this whole thing does, it takes you out of your comfort zone, def definitely. 
um, and the personal journey that you take is a complete additional one to the to the to the learning experience. Uh, you, you do change as a person a little bit, and um, the people you meet become family members, definitely. Um, and I think it's just really yes, having a more broader um, toolkit and 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 the whole experience is just something that is helps helps a lot in your personal development and at the end of the day also um in your in your business day to day fantastic um now i know that most people um who who take on the the program they are hoping to you know move up to those very very senior positions you know like yourself as a as a managing director and and i suppose a part of that is the kind of leadership skills that um come with it did you find um I suppose through informal or formal teaching that it was uh, uh, that you found an improvement in your kind of leadership ability. Definitely, um, like I said, it's the personal development that you go through. Is I I I I, I didn't expect it to be that intense, and um, you just the the, the leadership um, teaching aspect of of the course is 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 looking back is one of the main main parts of, of the whole course so um it it was in the indirect teaching the talks with your peers the coaching um uh, the the module assessments there's so many different elements of the course that try to develop your leaders leadership skills and um, it, that is definitely something that I think that has had quite an impact on the way that I lead um, my my teams and um, and the company. And it's definitely um, something that um, yeah I think even just having the group. I mean the, the, we we we've been out of class now for 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 over a year. And we still have daily contact within the group, and it's just like having having people that you know that are in similar similar situations, uh, similar points in their career path, have similar challenges at work. That it's just like also having like this this peer coaching that you can go to and you say, I have this problem. Um, how would you deal with it? And have you got have you been in a similar situation? And that definitely also um, applies for leadership problems. If you if you have problems or think you're 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 doing something wrong in the way that you are um, taking a decision or, or 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 leading the way, so the leadership aspect of the module is is very important. That's fantastic. It's really lovely to hear that you guys are all still so connected. Um, <laughs> it's something we get asked quite a lot, especially for like the part time programs. You know where you're not all the time 100% on campus you know do people still form those those really strong bonds it's really lovely to hear um that even though you know you only see each other in person for six days every six weeks you know you're still keeping in touch um i've only got uh, one more question uh, for Marin before we uh, before we hand over to questions from the audience so um uh, mina i hope you've got plenty uh, ready to go um but just the, the last thing i wanted to ask uh, Marin was about the um, the international modules uh, because it's not always based in Berlin that you're in person. So could you tell us a little bit more about um, what those involve? Yeah. So when I did the program, we had two international modules. I think now there are three international modules. We had the GNAM, which was um, which was a great experience. There was a, a selection of, I, I think, 14 different um, business schools all over the world. Um, you could choose your preference. I think we had two or three preferences that we had to select. I went to Berkeley Haas uh, for a week. And um, so, and and there it was completely different from the experience at, at ESMT. And uh, from from the whole class setup, from, from the topics, um, my topic was uh, uh, women's leadership in the 21st century, which was a which which was a great um, uh, topic, and 
it's really like a concentrated topic that you that you decide on. There were 14 different schools, 14 different topics. So you decided um, on a topic and a school and really had one very focused week on that um, topic, but in a, in a completely different um, surrounding, um, completely different people from also all over the world, from the, from the other 14 schools that were taking um, taking part. So an absolute fantastic experience. Um, the second international module that we had was a 10-day um, uh, international field seminar. Um, we went to um, uh, Sao Paulo, for, so Brazil, for um, six days and um, five days in Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. So um, that was completely different. Uh, there, the focus was more on um, company visits. So going into, we, we organized quite a lot ourselves. So really within the group, we were 53 people in our group. So within the group, um, we organized different company visits in Brazil and Argentina um, and went to see one to three, four companies per day, really going into factories, going into to agencies, um, having presentations, discussing topics with, with, with the locals on site. Um, also, we, we also had a, a leadership component in, in there, um, but it was just a very um, intense time as well, um, being able to, to really go on site and experience uh, local work um, in, in, the, in the different companies. Some of the companies even um, of people that were taking part, taking uh, part in our class. So um, after having a year of them explaining um, and, and, and talking about their companies, actually um, experiencing them on site, that was um, that was great. So the international, uh, yeah, as the international modules were definitely um, highlights of the of the of the whole program. That's really cool. Yeah, it must be nice to be able to kind of drill down like that. Was there um. Was there anyone in your class from Brazil, or yes. were you all? Oh, there was. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So we <laughs> had uh, from Argentina. We had um, we had two from Argentina, and there no, were two from Brazil and one from Argentina. So it was it was good. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it must have been nice to be able to sort of uh, play kind of host to the whole group. Yeah, yeah. did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I think we're ready to. Um, open up questions to uh, to Mila and to um, uh, and to our audience today. So um, Mila, if you if you're happy to uh, ask some, then then go for it. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for this uh, panel discussion and presentation. And we're moving on to the questions. If anyone hasn't typed their question yet, please do so in the Q and A um, chat box. So we're going to start with the first one, which I think is for Meren. And um, how did the EMBA change, change your career? Um, it, it's given me more. So my company is part of a larger group. Um, uh, I actually work for a company um, that it's, it's a very large international trade show company. So we organize um, large trade shows and conferences all over the world. And we are part of a, a larger group, and it's given me um, different possibilities uh, within the group. And I've also uh, received some uh, requests to actually change um, company um, after I, I, I finished my um, EMBA, but I declined those offers. I'm still within the same uh, company that I was uh, with when I graduated, but I have done, um, I, I, I didn't start off as a managing director, I became managing director in the program and um, have had different offers uh, put forward to me within the group and outside of the group. So I do see a connection with the, with the EMBA there and with my final report. So that's something that we haven't really uh, spoken about. So at the end of the EMBA, you have to graduate with some kind of um, work and you can do a, a master thesis or you can do a final report. Most of the people go for the final report. And the final report was actually um, something that was related to 
my job. And um, that final report gave me um, the, the, the push I needed for, for my career step. And that was the recognition within the larger group. So my final report was put into, uh, was actually put into place and uh, gave me a lot of recognition um, with the CEO of the group. That's great, thank you. Um, next question is on the admission side. So Lawrence, it will be directed to you. Uh, will an early application make my chances of getting a scholarship stronger? Um, well, when it comes to scholarships, we, in, in terms of the sort of, there isn't probably going to be a difference if you apply early or, or late. We do have a, an official kind of early bird deadline, but I believe that's already passed this year. Um, we don't sort of have a big pot of scholarship money that runs out, you know, the closer we get to the deadline. Um, so in terms of scholarships, I don't think it would make a difference. Uh, a candidate applying late is just as likely to receive a scholarship as a candidate applying, uh, applying early. Um, the one thing I would say is that um, because our classes are relatively small, we do fill up. Uh, so um, whilst we hold some places open for later applicants, um, we would always recommend that people apply as early as possible. Um, I know you know everyone always says that, um, but we work on a kind of rolling applications basis. So uh, we don't have any kind of internal deadlines. You know, you can apply whenever you're ready. Um, but again, one of the advantages of uh, not of being relatively small is that we can spend a little bit more time with our applicants. So if there's something about your application that you're not quite sure about, um, then we would definitely recommend you know submitting what you have, and then we will you know we're happy to kind of work with you to let you know if there are um, areas that need improvement. For example, you know bring a test score up or you know emphasize this that or um, So yeah, it wouldn't necessarily affect the amount of scholarship that you'll be given, um, but I, it could. Uh, affect your kind of chances of, um, uh, of making it into the class. Thank you. Um, Mary, next question I think is uh, is for you. Uh, what was the main reason to choose ESMT Berlin? Um, so I, I did a previous program at the ESMT, which I um, received a scholarship for, and um, I was just fascinated by the first program I did. The first program I did was um, an executive in transition um, program. And um, I just wanted to do more. Um, I wanted I, I wanted an, an MBA. And um, because I enjoyed the first program, and like I said, it was mainly the quality of the faculty. Um, and the facility, it's just its just a great facility as well, but the quality of the faculty and um, the fun that I had combined with what I learned in the first um, program that I did, more or less uh, gave, gave the final um, decision to, um, to go for the EMBA at, at ESMT. Great, thank you. Uh, we are moving on to the next next question. I, um, Lawrence, it's for you. Um, are you required to be employed full time during the degree? Ah, okay. Um, well, no is the is the short answer. Um, obviously, it, it is kind of designed um, as a program to be taken by those who are still working. Uh, but by no means is it a prerequisite that you have to be working. Uh, we actually have a couple of uh, students this year, uh, one uh, Phoebe Ash, she had um, moved from uh, the US where she was working for Amazon. Her partner had been offered a job in Berlin and so she was moving over. And so she was hoping to start her own company eventually. Um, her idea was that she would do the EMBA whilst also taking care of uh, three kids, so a pretty busy schedule. Um, and then that would help teach her the kind of entrepreneurial skills she needed so that when she graduated, she was able to, um, to start her own company. And, and the final report that, that Marin kind of mentioned, um, she, instead of doing that on an existing company, uh, she did that on a company that she was hoping to start. So it kind of gave it a little bit of a, a boost, a little bit of a head start. Um, so yeah, we, we don't require that people will be working um, in order to study with us. Uh, it, there are some advantages, I suppose, to having um, 
being able to kind of implement your learning quickly, but then I suppose there are also some disadvantages in that you then have to find the time if you're also working to, to take on a program like this. Um, I should also say as well that uh, whilst we do definitely recommend that you um, bring your employer on board uh, if you are um, if you are employed, uh, it's not required. Um, it's definitely going to make your life easier if, if your employer knows that you're doing this and is supportive of you, um, especially when it comes to that final report, as well as finding time and taking days off. Um, but if you are, you know, uh, um, uh, sort of as we are in, in Germany, you know, you get the typical kind of 30 days of annual leave every year. If you can make that fit for your in-person modules, there's no reason why um, you need to alert your employer. I know there are some EMBAs out there which require a kind of signed note from your employer, but we are, you know, the, especially for the people who are taking the executive MBA, these are senior professionals. They don't need their hands held. They know if they're comfortable or taking on this um, this challenge or not. Um, so yeah, we're pretty flexible when it comes to, to that kind of thing. Thank you. Um, well, I mentioned the employer. I think there's a question on this space for, for Marin. How did you pay for e your EMBA? Did you get financial help from your employer? Uh, no, I paid for it um, self-funded, so I paid for it privately. Um, in our class, it was quite a mixture. Um, a lot of, I would say, I'm not 100% sure, but I would say 60 70% were um, funded by their um, employer um, and uh, the rest was um, self-funded or a mixture. There were also two or three where they had a deal with their, um, with their company, um, like a 50-50 deal and, and things like that. I myself uh, paid for it um, by myself. Um, I'd just like to add to that, if, um, if anyone is uh, sort of struggling with um, the idea of getting their employer on board, we do offer a bit of support. So um, our admissions team are happy to, uh, we have a kind of pack um, which helps kind of sell the program to your employer. So uh, yeah, if anyone's interested, um, you can get a bit more information from our admissions team. That sounds great, thank you. Um, another um, question on tuition. Uh, how is tuition built and can it be paid in installments? I guess, Lawrence, you can, you can tip on that. Yeah, so uh, the tuition payment, uh, the tuition cost is 50, 57, 53, 50 something thousand euros uh, for the full 18 months. And that covers everything academic. So all kind of textbooks and subscriptions and, and that kind of thing. Uh, the tuition is broken down into three installments. So uh, a smaller kind of confirmation installment uh, at the beginning and then one in the middle and uh, one at the end. Um, so it's kind of, it's quite flexible in that, in that respect. Um, it's also uh, tax deductible um, uh, if you're a German resident. So you are able to kind of um, deduct the cost of the tuition from your annual tax bill, which for some people can have quite a significant um, financial, financial effect. Um, we do have uh, kind of scholarships, like we said, but we also work with a couple of educational loan providers. So um, uh, Progeny Finance and Brain Capital, and those are specific um, business education providers. So uh, they are completely geared up to provide business loans for those who are uh, looking to do you know, uh, an MBA or something. Um, I mean, it seems like a pretty safe bet. The, uh, the post-graduation salaries are all very healthy, and I, if I was going to lend money to anyone, it would be someone doing this kind of uh, this kind of program. Uh, and it's quite a straightforward process. The Project of Finance was set up by a South African guy who struggled to get finance for his MBA. Uh, and so the idea is now that it's providing finance to those who, you know, would struggle to, not would struggle, but, you know, traditional banks don't often understand the concept of, um, of investing in yourself in this kind of respect. So uh, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of options, uh, plenty of options out there. Thank you so much. Um, and we have another question. Uh, Marin, uh, you can answer, of course, from your perspective. And then, Lawrence, you can provide some tips and tricks on how did you prepare for the admission process? Um, I actually was a I was a bit late, so <laughs> I, I I was I was a, it took me quite some time to, to take the final decision and when I was finally prepared it was already 
coming up to, to one of the last deadlines, um, I um, prepared myself by, um, I actually studied through the, the, the GMAT um, books, um, did all the, the, the tests that, that I did for the GMAT, uh, but I then took the uh, ESMT um, uh, uh, test, which was also a little bit easier than, than the GMAT. Um, and I took the, um, the, the on-campus interview. Um, so preparing, it was really, I, I, did, I did keep and stick to, um, to the books that, I, that, that, that were offered by GMAT because it just covered quite a lot of the, especially mathematical um, side of, of, of the, ex, uh, the test I thought I was going to take but it was a little bit easier, um, the one at the ESMT. It wasn't quite as, um, as complex and it was a little bit more personal than um, the, the GMAT. Yeah, I would, um, I, if I was applying, I would be choosing to take that one as well. Uh, <laughs> um, from the perspective of the kind of admissions team, when it comes to, you know, if there was anything that we could recommend, um, it's, it's I suppose for anyone who's applied to business school, it can be quite a stressful uh, experience and it's, you know, you're making this very big decision and will I get accepted, will I, will I not? Um, but for us, it, it, it tends to be quite an easy decision, really, um, when we look at a candidate to know if they're going to be a good fit or not. Um, obviously, you have to demonstrate you know, that you've got the experience that we're looking for and the knowledge and the aptitude. But ultimately, um, at ESMT, we're quite a small quite a close-knit community and so when we look for a students profiles what we're really assessing is whether we think that they'll be um, a good fit in the classroom you know will they be collaborative uh, will they work well with everybody else um, and ultimately the question we ask ourselves is you know would I want to be in a group working on a project with this person um, so if you can demonstrate to us that you you are collaborative um, and that you will work to ensure that the whole group succeeds rather than just kind of you know i'm, I'm going to be the top and, and forget the rest of them uh, then that's really attractive to us um, and that kind of well, I, I like to think anyway that that kind of close-knit community moves on into our alumni network and and the events that we have on campus afterwards when we get people back um, really lovely to see all of these people who um uh, who spent so much time together and worked so hard together or come back in um, so you can imagine with a small group of only 50 people, it would only take like one or two with the wrong sort of attitude to, to spoil the experience for everyone else. So, um, so yeah, that's, sorry, I'm rambling now, but that would be the, the tip I would give um, for anyone who's out there, is demonstrate to us that you're going to be a valuable member of our community, um, and, and then we shouldn't have any problems. Thank you so much for this. Um, we have a couple more questions. Um, so I think this one can actually, he can both uh, uh, put your, your uh, thoughts to it. Uh, what are the networking events held by ESMT? Well, no, normally uh, during every module, there's one uh, evening event or one social event um, where uh, the whole group comes together and that's completely different from a Christmas dinner to a bowling event to um, I don't know something on campus a football we did a football uh, game so there's it, it also of course depends on on the season but there is normally always one at least one um, evening that you spend together and then there's organized like uh, fireplace discussions where ESMT bring in um, speakers from um, from outside um, normally uh, C-level executives from from quite large companies, some of the uh, sponsor fund, founder sponsor companies. Um, so that's something in addition. Um, when you're on campus, there's you're normally also tied up in in, in group work. So there's a lot of networking going on anyway. Um, on top of that, most of the group comes in from different locations, um, staying at one of the hotels nearby so 
you get to meet in the hotel in the evening, you go to the bar and just the networking goes on there as well. So there's there's networking that ESMT organizes. Um, um, there's also a lot of networking that goes on that is not really organized, um, which the group organizes themselves. Um, there's we, we had um, networking events with the full-time MBAs that, that the class reps um, organized. Um, we had networking events um, with uh, the uh, career service um, facilities or the uh, alumni network. So there's a lot of things that um, are organized uh, when it comes to, to networking on site as, and, and, and um, in between as well. Yeah, I think uh, you've you kind of wrapped that up quite nicely there. Um, just uh, another thing you, you touched on, um, like the other programs that we that we have as a school, uh, we, we have more than just our, our executive MBAs. We have a master's in management, a full time MBA, and a part time MBA as well as as well as all the kind of executive um, short courses um, as Mary kind of started with. Uh, so the, and those programs are a little bit more focused on campus, so they're on campus kind of full time really. Um, so there's always um, extracurricular events going on that they've organised, as well as extracurricular events going on that the school has organised and. The EMBAs, whilst not being on campus so much, are always, always invited to those kind of events as well. Um, you know, and the, as well as the big kind of uh, statement pieces, things like the alumni forum and the, you know, the annual forum and the digital future summit and you know, all these kind of things. Um, so obviously, at the moment, uh, in-person networking is a little bit harder, as you can imagine, or impossible. Um, but we hope to be kind of back up and running with those kind of events uh, into the summer so that you know, rather than doing these things online, we can be standing around in the garden with a glass of wine or beer. Uh, but hopefully it shouldn't be too long. Great, thank you. We have time for two more questions, so I'm gonna go straight to them. Um, does ESMT help with visas for the international modules? Uh, yes. Um, so for, for students who are flying into Berlin um, to do the to do the in-person modules, we do have a student services team who will help with any kind of temporary visas that are required. And then for the um, for the international modules, so for like the IFS or Genome Week, um, the executive MBA office, I believe, will work with students to um, to sort of help organise visas. I don't know, Marion, was that the case for you when you were travelling yeah. to Brazil? Okay. So uh, when we went to Brazil, a lot of some things were organised uh, internally within the within the group, and other things, uh, contacts, and so on, were provided by um, ESMT. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. For the um, for the MIM and for the full time MBA, we you know we have a few hundred students relocating to Berlin every year. So our student services team are, are pretty used to dealing with visas, um, spending a lot of time at the Afghanistan So. Um, yeah, but it's it's pretty straightforward. We've got a lot of experience with it. Thank you. And our last question: um, Are there any interest clubs to join while in the degree? Yes, <laughs> I think that I don't know if they're called clubs, Lawrence. I don't know, um, but there are uh, many different. Um, are they called clubs? I can't yeah, I don't name one, but uh, there are there are so many different um, interest uh, uh, task forces clubs that that you can join. Um, there's there is quite a few, and they're very active and very good. So yeah. it's nice to know that, like, even for the EMBA, where you don't spend too much time on campus, that you know that those students still get involved in those kind of clubs. Um, yeah, we've got. I mean, Marin's right. There's a big, big, long list on the website somewhere. Um, and also, if you are interested in starting your own, uh, that's also fine. We have a bit of seed capital available for any students who are interested in uh, in starting something new. I think this year the full time MBA started a, an agri business club, the first time we've had one of those, uh, as well as the MIMS uh, picking up and running with our um, LGBTQI, uh, the query club, it's called. Uh, they've been organizing a bunch of events, they're super, uh, super involved. Um, so, yeah, it's a uh, there's a lot going on, definitely. Maybe I can just add one thing that none of the questions have really um, touched base on, but that was something that uh, I, I normally get asked quite a lot is um, how does the EMBA 
um, how you can combine it with family. I think that's just like time management, having a full-time job, um, kids, uh, and then also going back to school is uh, definitely something that I normally get asked, like, how did you, how did you manage? And um, maybe I can just add on to if, if somebody out there uh, watching this um, has any thoughts or um, on, on how is this going to, um, going to fit in. Um, it's, it, it's a challenge and it's difficult, but it's, it's manageable. And as long as you have the buy-in from your family and uh, the awareness that within those 18 months, certain things are not possible, um, I went on holiday with my family, but I wasn't really on holiday with my family because I was mainly reading. Um, but that was okay because I had the buy-in and they knew that this was 18 months and after that they had their mum back. Um, and it was actually um, it was actually quite nice because they sat down and did their homework and I sat down and did my homework. But it is definitely something that you have to discuss with your family um, and uh, you really have to um, you have to be aware that it's you you cannot do the program and have exactly the same family life that you did before but it will come back again so yeah time management is is something it took me like i said two modules to get used to it but um it is something that you can do even if you um do have a full-time job and a family did you find um when you graduated that you had you know sort of vast yawning expanses of free time um yeah. afterwards <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely you you fall into like this hole and it's like oh what can i do with the time with my time and so I, I actually started a list of things that i wanted to do i started a, a learning a language and i um started I, I had a list of books that i wanted to read books that were not um school books but books that i was interested in <laughs> That's so, very productive. Yes, I started. I started on a list of books, and uh, I started learning a language. But it was it was um, handling the free time. It took uh, it took quite quite a while to actually um, yeah find out what to do with 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 time on hand. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I, I I'm very impressed. I think if I had just done something similar, I'd want to lie down for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I guess if we've got time for just another quick uh, question, I, it's something I always like to ask. Um, if there was like one tip that you could give someone who is thinking about starting one of these programs, um, what would it what would it be? Oh, just do it. I mean, it's it really was. Um, it was just definitely one of the best decisions I, I made. And looking back, it was just, and there were there were days where I was just, oh, I don't think I can do this. And and also exams where I just didn't know where to start and, 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 and didn't really know why I was learning this. But just looking back, it was really one, it was just the most fantastic experience. And I, and that, that, I mean that in what I learned personally, but also, um, what the, the the knowledge that that I was able to absorb and, and just go through, but the whole experience, the whole stepping out of the comfort zone, um, the people I met along the way, it was just really an, an all over fantastic experience. So I could only just say, if you have the possibility, um, do it. Just that's all I can really say. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, that's it. I, I'm, I'm out of questions now, I promise. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marianne and Lawrence, for this wonderful panel discussion. And thanks, everyone, for attending and uh, expressing your interest in ESMT. Berlin, uh, to those whose questions were not answered, we will send them to our wonderful panelists and uh, they will take time to answer them and I will send the, the answers to you. Um, you will also receive a link with the recording of the whole webinar so you can rewatch it. On behalf of the UniMy team, we wish you luck in your academic journey and we hope to meet you again soon online. Thank you, Marin and Lawrence, once again for this wonderful event. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all.